You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, you know who I am. I'm Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And today, I am broadcasting from almost spring, Atlanta, Georgia. Guess what? So grateful that you made a decision to join me all over the world today. And I can truly say with all of the faith that's on the inside of me, that I believe that your life will never be the same again. Well, how are you doing today? I pray that you are making a decision because you know in life everything is a decision to have and create a wonderful and powerful and abundant day well i am doing well i've had so many people ask me well constance how are you doing uh, after your brother's transition and uh, thank all of you once again for your love support and your prayers and uh, I am going through the process uh, as I said last week he lived a powerful life not a perfect life but left a powerful legacy of love ministry serving etc so so I'm going through the process uh, sometimes I may have a moment and uh, but I really can't be too sad because of the wonderful times that we had together and because of the legacy that he left. OK, wow, do I have a great show for you today? How many of you are ready to take the jump? You ready to take the leap of faith, the jump in the area of love, loving again, uh, possibly career, starting a business. Well, I have a great show for you today and I'm going to be teaching yours truly that I'm going to be teaching on how to take the quantum jump of faith. Uh, and I'm going to be giving you a little bit of my story. But then part two, I'm going to have one of my clients come on and share how she took the quantum leap uh, of faith in the area of her career. So, you know, I'm really specific and I'm going to give you lots of how to's. Uh, for many years, many of you know, I taught in college. And so I think it comes from all of those years of teaching and giving objectives and uh, all of those years of being on the road, uh, conducting leadership training. So get ready. If you're ready for a jump, you ready for a leap, you know that there's more. You're tired of me keep meter, me- mediocrity. I got that out. <laughs> Uh, then uh, this is certainly the show for you. I also want to remind you that the rates have gone down for the Law of Attraction cruise, uh, which is April the 8th through the 13th. I already got my black bathing suit out. I'm going to get me a tan. I can already visualize myself on the beaches of Cozumel. Really, I've been all over the world, but those beaches are so blue and so wonderful. And so the reason that the rates have gone down is because uh, the network is looking to match you both male and female with cabin mates. And so if you have another roommate or a cabin mate, that means that your price can go down. And you know, the real deal is we are not in the rooms that much. And if you've ever been on a cruise, you already know that the only time you're in your room is to go to sleep at night and to get ready in the morning. So you still have a couple of weeks. Go to LOARadioNetwork.com. Click on that cruise link. And uh, I look forward to having a cup of coffee with you. 
let's see is there anything else make sure that you visit my my website fulfillingyourpurpose.com you guys already know about my coaching uh, also visit me on social media instagram cl arna11 uh, also on twitter loa constance and on facebook coach with constance okay y'all ready I'm going to take a sip of water. You know, it's so interesting. Two days ago, I didn't have a voice. I had been doing so much thinking, so much talking and thinking. So let's talk about how do you take the quantum leap? You know, yeah, I know the first thing I'm going to say, God wants you to live an abundant life. And you already know that mediocrity was never meant to be a part of your life, just getting up, going to work, just barely making it, living it, uh, living paycheck to paycheck. And so if you're feeling uneasy and restless and a little frustrated, then, you know, that spirit pricking you saying, hey, wake up, I, I created you for more. And, and, you know, many of you might feel stuck because of your current conditions, circumstances, your age, geographic location. It can be so much more, but it's time for you to take the quantum leap. And I want to say that when you take a quantum leap, that me that doesn't mean that you just leap and there's no plan. I really think that when you take the leap or the jump that you have planned and uh, you just kind of know on the inside, I was created for more. I, I'm supposed to have more. I'm not supposed to be living paycheck to paycheck. I'm supposed to be doing more, etc. cetera. And, and so what I'm going to share just initially will be just general principles about how to take the quantum leap or the jump. And then I'm just going to share about my quantum leap in business 20 years ago. That's right. It was 1999. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I took the quantum leap of leaving my safe job, my secure job at the school system, and leaping into my business, my consulting and training business, my life has never been the same. So I'm going to give you specifics of what that would look like. So first of all, if you're thinking about taking the quantum leap and you just know that there's more, all change begins in your mind first. Y'all knew I was going to say that it begins in your consciousness. So when you start thinking, I want more, uh, I want to be more, I want to do more, I want to have more. I really believe that that's the first step of moving towards your quantum jump. Um, and the interesting thing is, you know, most people have heart attacks. More people have heart attacks on Monday morning. Why? Because people are going back to their routine of just going to work, kind of robotical, getting up, going to work, coming home. And so you know that that is no way to live. You know, God is a God of, uh, 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 he's very strategic. So when I say quantum jump, it, it doesn't mean that you're going to jump without a plan. You're going to have a plan, but, but you begin in your mind first. So we're jumping from our regular way of thinking, our regular way of being, aren't you tired of that? Our regular way of not taking any action and being paralyzed by fear, just going along with the status quo. And But you already know you're restless because you know, oh, there's more on the inside for me. So here are just some general principles before I really get to the specifics uh, with how I took my quantum leap. The first thing I'm going to say is, and y'all already know what it is, you got to decide what you want. What is the quantum leap that you really want? You have to decide and get clear about that. 
And I might say this a million times. You don't have to know how, but just decide what you want. I knew that I wanted to start a business. I didn't see how. I was too scared. I was too afraid. So the first thing is you have to decide what you want. You might be taking the quantum leap of health. You know, I refuse to carry this extra 50 pounds around. You might not know the direction, the particular eating plan. All I'm asking you to do is to decide. And this probably should have been first, but you have to know that God is in you and with you. Even before you were born, God deposited certain talents and gifts and desires on the inside of you. So the spirit is going to be there assisting you, supporting you, and giving you the strength to make the jump. He already has people in line just waiting for you to move waiting for you to take that jump, move toward that jump to assist you. You know, this week on social media, I posted a picture of me and Cynthia Barnes, who is the lady who gave me my first six-figure uh, consulting and training contact in 1999. He already had Cynthia there waiting for me, but I had to be prepared and I'm going to talk more about that because when prepared and opportunity meet, therein lies success. I think the next thing is you got to count the cost. But it's going to cost you, baby. <laughs> it's going to cost you money, time, effort, getting out of your comfort zone, or possibly leaving some of your old friends, getting out of your old ways of thinking, your old ways of doing, going different places. You need to count the cost. You know, maybe I'm going to use weight loss again. Or maybe if you're desiring to lose weight and all of your friends, they just want to go to the all-you-can-eat buffet, you, you can't be hanging out with them. Everybody got that? So these are just general. Count the cost. And know that it probably won't be easy and you're going to have a lot of obstacles. You know, I think of Steve Harvey who slept in his car, but his vision was so big because he knew what he wanted to be. He was sleep in his car and then go in some restroom and, you know, wash up. And then he would go and do comedy. The same thing with Tyler Perry. Every time I pass by the street uh, where his um, fabulous mansion, it's the biggest thing on the block. I think he sold it. Uh, uh, I think he recently sold it. But it's so big, it takes up four or five blocks. But he used to sleep on that same street in his car. Because anytime you quite take the quantum leap or jump, you know, it won't be easy. Uh, and you're going to have obstacles that come up against you. Somebody said, uh, you know, if you're going through hell, just don't stay there. <laughs> you know, you're going to keep moving. You know, because your vision, you know, next one is, you know, you, you, you've you decided what you want, but your vision is so big, so strong, so powerful. It pulls you. It holds you. It motivates you. You may cry at night and get up the next morning and keep moving forward. That's what I did. When you move into the quantum leap, you need to say, God, give me a vision. And everybody's not going to understand your vision. You might not even need to share it with a lot of people because it's your vision. All right. I think the next thing is who's going to be on your team. You said, Constance, I don't have any money. Well, you don't have to have money initially, but you do have to identify what are your strengths. Well, I'm really good at at um, organization, but my weakness is I'm not great. I don't have great interpersonal skills. You know, yours truly, I'm really great at communicating with people, with people, with speaking, human resources, yada, yada, yada. But when it comes to admin and organization, I had to learn that. And at first I had people around me 
who helped me with that. My first business coach helped me with that because that was not my strength. And, you know, speaking of coaches, baby, no matter what you do, you're going to need a mentor or a coach. You know, has anybody ever seen anybody jump out of a plane? And uh, what comes to my mind is uh, the late President Bush. And I think he jumped out of of a plane when he was 90 something. And he jumped with this other guy and he was on top of the other guy's back. And to me, that just reminds me of somebody supporting you doing your jump. He was he was assisted. We all need assistance uh, when we're making our jump. Uh, and that's why you have the large uh, weight loss companies like Jeannie Craig. They have a support system and a health coach that you can call at any time if you feel like you're going to eat a whole pie (laughs) or something like that. Everybody understand where I'm coming from. You need support and a mentor and a coach as you begin to take your quantum jump. And, you know, I always say, if not now, when? You know, it's not, it's 2019, it's March. You know, you know, when are you going to make a plan and just begin to move? And, you know, I might be a little serious because of my brother's transition. And I just realized how, how fragile life is and how you just need to embrace and inhale and, and just um, take advantage of every moment. And then I'm not going to linger on this, but you need a plan, baby. You know, what are your steps going to be to move you toward your jump? And as I said, I don't believe in just jumping. I believe that risk can be calculated and planned for. Uh, A lot of people who jump and say, well, I'm just going to quit my job and start my business. And they haven't developed a plan. Uh, They haven't developed a strategy. They don't have money saved up. And uh, things just don't happen. So when you're taking the jump, you need to begin writing down a plan. How am I going to do this? And I tell people, you just need to pray and say, God, what should my next step be? Then you take that step. God, what should my next step be? Then you take that step, etc. And then what new skills, concepts, or learning do you need to acquire in order to take that jump? I'm always honing my skills. I'm always thinking of doing shows differently. I'm always thinking of bringing on different guests. When I train, I'm always doing something different. Does everybody see that? And then lastly, before I get to the specifics of what I did, you need to really deal with your fears. You you know, some of some of y'all, you've let your fears handcuff you. They have paralyzed you, you know, to your circumstances. So you need to make a decision. Wait a minute. I have God on the inside of me. I'm a powerful creator. I'm a powerful human being. I refuse to be handcuffed, held back, limited anymore. I'm going to take the leap. And remember, everything begins with a quality decision. As I said, you des- you decide. And so it's going to look like this, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to make a quality decision. And a quality decision is this. Come hell or high water, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to stop, cave in, give up, or quit. I'm going to change directions. I'm going to get up. I may cry, but I'm going to take the quantum leap. A story that comes to my mind, there was a woman uh, that I was coaching and she had been so hurt by her husband. He left her for a younger woman. Uh, She didn't feel great about herself. She was angry, mad, pissed off for like 30 years she wouldn't go on a date she was just she was really mean that's what she said about herself hey i didn't say that (laughs) she was mean and grouchy and and whatever and she was beautiful young vibrant and then one day i guess i don't know if somebody slapped her one of her friends said girl but i think what she did was um she was awakened in her consciousness 
and she made a quality decision. I'm going to open up my heart and love again. And when she did, she went on her line. She went online. That was that was the way that she chose to do it because she was sick and tired of being sick and tired. She took a leap of opening up her heart and believing that love could come again. And I mean, this woman is so happy. It's ridiculous. Every time you see them together, they're just giggling and laughing. What did she do? She took a leap of faith. She took the quantum jump to embrace love again. Okay, so let me give you some specifics about how I took the quantum leap in business. <clears throat> you guys know that I have I had a BA in business. <clears throat> excuse me, and I have an MA in counseling. And really, I was supposed to get an MBA, and I just felt the Spirit led me to get a, a master's in counseling. And uh, I began my practice, you know, individual practice. I, I, I work with women. I work with addiction, facilitating small groups, speaking to small groups. And then I start working for the, for the school system. I didn't have children. I'm like, Lord, how am I going to work in this school system? But what I discovered was that my main gift was communication, motivating, and just giving people solutions. So see, <clears throat> you're going to discover what your gifts are, you know, as you're about to make the quantum jump. So I was working for the school system and I just was not happy. I mean, I complained. Don't y'all do like I did. I complained. I was irritable, et cetera. And so I knew I was great at communicating and speaking because whenever I would speak and I did all kind of pro bono speaking at networking events, at chamber of commerce events, at luncheons, at conferences, you named it, I was speaking. And so I just felt led in my spirit. I want to be a trainer. I want to be a leadership trainer and train people. And so I had to prepare. That's the first thing you have to do if you're going to take the quantum leap in business or career or anything. You know, what did I want to train? What area? Uh, how can I begin using my gift for free? As I said, I spoke to anybody who would listen to me. But what I did was I started developing three subjects, the modules of what it would look like. I had typed everything up, had all of my handouts ready. And guess what? Didn't anybody call me? Uh, I think the three subjects were stress, ma stress management in your job and how to keep your employees motivated and steps to take your organization from good to great. I was ready. You know, I was ready. And so some of you, you, you need to get ready. You need to prepare for that which you wish to experience. I was ready for the quantum jump. But Pastor Power said, Constance, it ain't time to jump yet. And uh, that's 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 the value of having a great mentor. And I knew that it wasn't. And so each year I would go, but I was still preparing and speaking. And so and I realized what God was dealing with me was that he had to deal with me. He had to deal with my mindset, my fears, uh, <clears throat> you know, my beliefs. And I felt like he was saying to me, girlfriend, when all of this start happening in your life, remember you give me the glory is not you. So it wasn't about my business, but it was about who I was becoming. Uh, more organized, more successful in my thinking, understand that I needed to plan for finances. I needed to choose a business structure. I had to pick and register my name. I did all of that and didn't anybody even contact me. What was I doing? I was getting ready for the jump. I got my license and permits. I set up an accounting system. I was ready. I wrote down my business goals, etc. And, and, and so uh, another thing that I felt like I really needed in order to take that quantum jump and to get ready for it, because remember when I said when preparation and opportunity meet, therein lies success. I know so many people say they want something, but they ain't doing nothing to prepare for it. 
you got to do something. I told one of my clients she wants to speak. I said, well, the first thing you got to do is go to Toastmasters. She said, Toastmasters? I said, yeah, you want to speak, right? And, and so you're preparing for that which you wish to experience. So I got me a business coach. It was very, it was, it was five grand. And I'm like, five grand? But I knew that she knew what she was talking about. And she could take me places that I had not been. And see, in business, if you're thinking about business or changing careers, that's what your mindset has to be. You really have to see it as an investment. So she helped me with my website, you know, et cetera. Um, and, and I, I think that you have to do your research. I did my research to really get clear about what am I going to be training on, you know, and I knew that I was going to train uh, leadership training, and then I was going to train people who wanted to re-enter the, the job market. And then my third umbrella was, was women. So if you're thinking about taking the quantum leap in business, you got to get clear about what is your product? Is there a need for it? What makes you different? Um, are you meeting a specific need in a way that nobody else does? What is the value, uniqueness, and the results, you know, that you're going to bring to others? So, see, I had time to think about all of that. I really defined my niche. And for all of you who are taking the quantum leap in business, <clears throat> I know so many people say, I just want to be a motivational speaker. I'm like, to who? I just want to be a life coach. What's going to make you unique from the other hundred thousand a million life coaches uh, etc and a great example of that would be uh, I have a friend and she is a parenting coach now you know I I told somebody I'm scared of teenagers <laughs> because you know they're just in that wonderful stage but that's a great example of being a coach and meeting a specific need. She deals with single mothers who are raising children alone. And so all of her motivational speaking is around giving them solutions in parenting. So she's answered all of that, those questions. You know, the value that she brings, how unique she is, the results that she brings to others, etc. And so when the time came, and the and and the right time does come, let me talk about timing a little bit. And, and, and I believe that a lot of people say, well, I'm just waiting on God. No, God is waiting on you. But in my case, before I took the quantum leap, I, I did a lot of inner work. And I felt like the Spirit whispered to me, ministry living at your mission, not money. Because I had my mind set on M-O-N-E-Y. Honey, I'm getting ready to leave this school system and I'm getting ready to make some money. So see, all of that had to be formed in me because success is weighty. You have to be ready for, for success. You have to be ready for the leap. You have to be ready when you lose 100 pounds and your other friends are still overweight. You have to be ready when you change careers. You have to be ready when you open up your heart to love again. And so, so timing is important. And so when the time came, they called me, uh, Cynthia Barnes called me. And it's so interesting, a friend of mine introduced me to her and she said, can you come and speak on Dress for Success? I'm like, Dress for Success? And it was in Dublin, Georgia, which is a small town south of Atlanta. I'm like, hey, I'm used to being in the ATL, going to Dublin. But I went to Dublin I remember I stood on that stage and I taught on Dress for Success. I didn't even really feel like that I really did that well because it wasn't really my gift. But afterwards, she and I had lunch and she said, Constance, I'm over. She was over 
um, this training department and uh, she had a lot of money that she had to use. And that was my first hundred thousand six figure contract. And guess what? All of the things that I had prepared, she said, I want one, two, three, four. And all of the modules that I had prepared while I was sitting at home doing nothing, waiting for somebody to call me, that's what she wanted. So that's how I took the quantum leap. And boy, it happened so fast. I mean, I start traveling Monday through Friday for years. I was training every day, speaking every day, five days a week. Um, making more money than I could have ever imagined. But what I'm saying to you is it's the preparation period. It's your mindset changing your thinking. It's getting ready for. And the way that it happened to me, I would have never dreamed in a million years that that would be the way that uh, that open door would happen for me. And so I was all about how could I wow my clients? How could I leave them with uh, unforgettable? Y'all know the song, unforgettable, you know, that's who you are. You know, but I left them with an unforgettable experience so that they would want more services from me. From me. And so then after that, somebody else heard about me, uh, the Georgia Department of Labor, and they gave me a contract. And then some, and then somebody else heard about me, and it just went on and on and on. And so what am I saying to you today? I'm saying to you that when you take your quantum leap of health, your quantum leap of of loving yourself uh, enough to fall and make a decision to love the quantum leap of I know I deserve a better career I'm going back to school etc you never know what that is going to lead to I never knew of all of the creativity that was on the inside of me because when I received my consulting and training contracts it was, I could really just, it was carte blanche for me. I could do whatever I want to. I mean, I could bring on speakers. I could create wonderful modules. I could have people sitting in the floor coloring, whatever I wanted to do. So, so it was all about me and my quantum leap over the past 20, 20 years has drastically changed me. Here I am on the radio with you and March is my a 10th year here I am on the radio with you talking to you don't even know you why because I took that quantum leap and so I'm just strongly encouraging all of you that's just my story it doesn't have to be yours to really decide what you want as I said going back to that knowing that God is the one who is in you if you're restless I believe that the spirit is saying to you there's more come out of your comfort zone you know I want you to do more count the cost and, and, and know that there is so much more for you do not limit yourself do not limit god in your life begin to plan what do you want your life to look like and, and go ahead and take that quantum leap toward abundance toward health toward love toward uh, a new career etc wow time went by so fast so I am going to go to these quick commercials and then I'm going to be back and I want you to hear from one of my clients uh, who decided to take a quantum leap and what happened in your life. It's, going, it's a very interesting ending, you know, what happened to her uh, when she decided to, to take the leap. And uh, what I'm thinking about, make sure that you guys send me your stories and your ideas about taking that quantum leap and what area you've made a decision that I want more, I deserve more, 
uh, I'm going to be more and just experience an abundant life. Wow, guys, stay tuned, and then I'm going to be right back uh, with my very special guests. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Well, I am back and I wanted to share with you a real live example of uh, one of my clients who decided to take a risk. She decided to take different action and what happened in her life. And so I want you to listen in so that you can gain some insight and revelation about your own life. So I want to I wanted her to come on and she volunteered and I don't know if she volunteered or I harassed her, but she wanted to share her experience to really help somebody else. So Jamie, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Thank you. Hello, Constance. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Jamie is my client who lost 80 pounds. Is it more than that now, Jamie? We're at 81 now, Constance. 81. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'll <gosh>. take it. <laughs> 81 pounds and has sustained that weight for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, whenever you release a lot of weight, you gain great confidence and you want to try new things. And uh, I just want to share with you what happened in her life and see how I can help my listeners. So talk to us, Jamie. What did you decide to do? So I was 100% convinced that I was ready to start in a new position. Mm -hmm. Um, I just knew it was time for me to go. Uh, It was time for me to spread my wings. And so I was able to um, get into a new position with a different company. Mm -hmm. And um, first of all, it's, almost unheard of. It's very hard to get a position where I currently am. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was like, you know, are you sure this is what you want to do? So this was a very risky move for me, but um, I wanted to take the risk and, you know, sometimes it's easier to be afraid and allow fear to kind of hold you back or hold you where you are because that's comfortable. It's familiar and it's not as scary as actually leaping. So I decided to take the leap. And um, Constance, the first week that I started the new position, in my mind, I knew something just didn't feel right, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense at all. That makes Um, sense. (laughs) And, you know, I was like, okay, maybe it's just my nerves. You know, I have to get used to something new. And the second week came and I still didn't get that feeling of I've arrived. Like, this is it. This is the moment. And so I reached out to you to express, you know, how I was feeling and for you to help me work through um, my my feelings. And you and, asked me, you, you know. And what were your feelings? I feel I, I was shameful. I was yeah. confused, number one, because, you know, when you, you, you feel like you've prayed for something and it, it's here, you think it's here, and now it's not right. So you almost feel ungrateful to even discuss that it doesn't feel right, right. because you think people are going to judge you like you're just being ungrateful. Um, you feel shameful like people are going to judge you. Um, 
you feel confused, like, did I make the wrong decision? Am I just being afraid? Am I acting out of fear? It's a, a, a tons of emotions that you're feeling. And so um, I express those all to you. And um, I'm lucky enough, and I have to share this if I'm going to give any tips, is I am a, a good steward at what I do. Um, I make sure I maintain good relationships with people that I work with. And that was key to um, this situation because I had the opportunity to go back to my old position. And I say that because, you know, even if you're frustrated within your your current job or situation and you feel like you want to leave, you still need to make sure you maintain good relationships and act with integrity. Because had I not, I would not be having this conversation with you today. Not and so, um, yeah, so I, I reached out back to my old employer and um, they were willing to allow me to come back. And my discussion with you was, Constance, what are people going to say? I just <laughs> left, you know. And, and I said, I said, girl, you better call your ex-supervisor. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> but I mean, it's, is you know hindsight is always twenty twenty. It's sad that that's what I was thinking about other people, which mm-hmm. you know you've coached me through that before, thinking about what other people were gonna say, what other people were gonna think, and how they were gonna judge me, and how I was gonna respond when they asked me why I came back. Uh, everything outside of what I wanted to do and what was best for my family and what was best for myself. Um, I was about to miss out on an opportunity because of what other people were thinking yeah so I'm glad I had you to coach me (laughs) the (laughs) only thing I said was girl you better go back to that old position and I just want to unpeel this just a little bit Jamie uh uh you said that you decided to take a leap of faith or take the leap rather than just kind of stay where you are where you were and not really examine the unknown. I think that's quite courageous, actually. Yeah, because, um, you know, before leaving, they, of course, offered, you know, asked me to stay. And in my mind, I was like, you know, I don't want to live with that regret. How will I ever know if this is going to be good for me or not if I don't take the risk? Right. So... I had to take the risk. And what did you learn? What did you learn? Because anytime you, and what I want to share with the listeners is anytime you take a leap, a leap of faith, uh, a leap of trust, a leap of doing something different, there are always lessons connected to that. And so you never allow your circumstance or situation to take from you. You always gain from it so that what you gain would take you to next level living. We already know Thomas Edison. How many times did he try to do, you know, the light bulb and everything that he did? and he didn't see it as failure he saw it as okay I learned something what what can I do with what I've learned for the next time I try it and so that's what I want to get listeners to do instead of staying in fear I think the percentage of people who really don't love what they do uh, is it's just phenomenal and how sad that is and you know you just wanted to spread your wings and I commend you for that so what are some other lessons you learned Jamie I learned that before I made that decision um, I was focusing a lot on the negative aspects of my position. I spent way too much time in the negative. Mm -hmm. And so being away from it allowed me to appreciate and find the love again with what I was doing. Wow. It gave me a chance to see like, wait a minute, I really loved what I was doing. I loved my I I liked the people that I was working with (laughs) and I miss those relationships. So you have to find the good. And you told me that as well. You have to find the good. Stop, evaluate, 
and adjust. What else find. did you learn? I also learned to make sure I don't burn bridges and keep That's those big. good relationships um, because that was key, very key. Um, I learned that life is a journey and it's not always black and white. Mm-hmm. And it's okay if you change your mind. It's okay if you make a different decision. It's okay. It's a journey and you're going to learn from everything. But I just have a new, a better appreciation for where I am now. I've also learned how to reevaluate or evaluate my choices better Mm -hmm. to really see the pros and the cons. And I didn't do that because I didn't do that as thoroughly as I should have um, before taking the other position. So you really have to evaluate and get a different perspective as well. Um, That's always good. I learned that as well. And don't listen to the chatter. Um, People didn't want me to go. People didn't want me to stay. (laughs) Like people are going to have their opinion, but it's about what you want to do. And it's about what works best for you. Well, those are some powerful lessons. And I just want to focus in on a couple of them, Jamie. Um, Really, I don't have to say anything after this, but no matter where you are taking a look at the good. Jamie yes. was focusing in on maybe stuff that was going on. And baby, no matter where you work, it's always going to be stuff going on. So when people say, well, Constance, that's why I want to own my own business w- uh, with you like you do. I'm like, even with me, it's stuff going on. I have clients, I have consulting firms that I work with. And so like Jamie said, really focus in on the good that you do have right where you are. That's major. You want to say anything else on that, Jamie? Absolutely. And now that I'm back, um, you know, in my position, I have a different respect. I have a different attitude about where I am, I look more into the work versus everything that's going around. And also I choose to ignore the chatter because it's still there, (laughs) but I make a decision every day to find the good in what I'm doing now. And you know, something else that Jamie did, she went with her own um, uh, intuition. When she got the new job, she, she, she's like, something not right. I'm not really feeling this. I mean, when I got that text, I'm like, what? You know, (laughs) something's not right. And so she went with that inner guidance, that inner spirit and made her decision based on that rather than what people would think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you have to follow your good. It's there. And this was the first time I will say that I've experienced something like that. So it was really weird, which is why I had to get your help to help me navigate through it. But I just knew, I knew the first week that mm, something's not, something's just not right here. And right. so, um, yeah, intuition, it was key for this. And, and, then, and then having the courage to okay, I made that decision. And when she called me and we had our session, what I said was, don't judge yourself. Um, And then I said, you left in integrity. Call your supervisor, win N-O-W. And the fact that she left with integrity is major. You know, I'm sure she left her new place with integrity. And, yes. and and her old job, she left with the integrity. And because she did, they wanted her back. And so Absolutely. I told her, no judging yourself, but you're just ex- observing what did, why did I make this choice and what mm-hmm. am I going to gain from this experience? Absolutely. And, and, and we, we dealt a lot with shame. There's no shame in taking a leap. 
(laughs) There's no shame in because it's a journey. And I'm sure you feel more courageous and probably even people who know you say, wow, that was so courageous of you. I probably could have never done that, Jamie. Yes, so many people. It's amazing. So many people have said that exact thing, like, wow, you have encouraged me because just for just for doing it, like Mm -hmm. just for taking the leap is admirable. So I've heard that time and time again. And one more thing, um, timing is of the essence. Because had I um, not acted swiftly on my intuition, I would have missed my moment or missed the opportunity. Yeah. So, you know, make sure you're listening to your gut and take immediate action. Definitely. Right. And I think it was snowing or something that weekend and you were supposed to meet. I'm like, I don't care if it's snowing. I don't care how many feet it's snowing. You need to call this woman, right? And, and, yes. and, and let her know that you want to come back. And so for those of you who are thinking about, who are living in fear, you're afraid to take the leap. You're afraid to take action. You have, you're going to have to do a paradigm shift in your thinking around failure. Because what Jamie did was that expanded her consciousness. Right, Jamie? I, I'm, I'm sure it made her feel bolder. Uh, And in other areas, um, I'm sure that it would make her feel like, well, next time I take a leap in an area, you know, now she has all of these principles that she can use in uh, in order to keep moving forward and not stay in fear. Absolutely. And Constance, just one more thing. All of the negative doubting that I had in my head, like, what are people going to say? They're going to say this. They're going to say that. None of that happened. Everyone was so happy. I received nothing but a warm welcome back, you know, great positive reactions to me coming back. So my worst fear in my mind didn't even come into play. Yeah, it's in your mind. And (laughs) excuse me, jokingly, I said, Jamie, they ain't thinking about you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I said they ain't think excuse my they ain't thinking about you. People are concerned about their own lives. They may yes. see you and say, Oh hey Jamie, you're back. Okay, welcome back. And then after that their minds go back into their own stuff. Am I right about exactly. that? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> So I was like, yep, she said that was going to happen. And that's exactly what happened. And so what do, what are the principles here we dealt with? Don't let your fears hold you back. If you take a leap, see that as a journey. Uh, you're not judging yourself. You are observing. Uh, whatever you do, do it in integrity. Um, you know, expand your consciousness and t- and and take the lessons gained from the experience. Shift your paradigm around failure and mistakes, and you know, and what mistakes are. And and Jamie says something about timing, and I said to her, God is behind the scenes working on our behalf, and many times we don't allow. Um, are circumstances and people and situations to, to, to get in place because I felt Jamie was a little antsy, you, you yeah. know, and that there's nothing wrong with that, but I am so proud of you. And that's why I want you wanted you to come on and just share, you know, all of these great principles with people. And so I did. Oh, and also we dealt with shame. We're not shame about anything. We're really celebrating her expanded consciousness. So do you feel different after um, making that that quantum leap on the inside? Absolutely. It is every moment is a learning opportunity. And I feel I feel so lightweight. All the pressure I had put on myself is gone. I just feel so much better now. Mm hmm. You I know, do. When I called you and asked you if you would do the show, I think you were at lunch and I interrupted your lunch uh, and uh, <laughs> and you and you said, Constance, I'm so happy." Yes, and I am. Um, I think 
Well, I know it's because I'm focusing I'm focusing my attention on what I love, where I am, you know, being in the moment, being in the now. And I just feel so good and so confident and so great on the inside. Mm -hmm. And because I'm able to make decisions, that's, you know, and I have to pat myself on the back. I'm like, Jamie, people don't do that. That was bold. That Mm -hmm. was, you know, that was a really risky decision and you did it. And so I'm just proud. I I can say that I'm very happy with myself. And so I was just having a moment that day. And I'm glad because when we first started coaching, you didn't have that. It made me so happy and proud, you know, to hear that. And so I'm going to say to you, Jamie, even prophetically, that the quantum step that you took with just practice for other big quantum leaps that you're going to be taking. So this was kind of like dress rehearsal, if you get me. Yes. This is dress yes. rehearsal. So when the next thing comes along and I get a text from you, Constance, can I have a session, please? Uh, you know, then you will have some principles under your belt. You will be able to make wiser decisions. Everybody who's been successful has has just struggled. I mean, Beyonce, Einstein, um, Thomas Edison, even Abraham Lincoln, who had so many what people would call failures. But if you would just take those and don't let fear grip you and turn them into stepping stones, wow, you can just live a phenomenal life. So, Jamie, you have not let fear grip you, right? That is right. Yes, it's it's freedom. It is complete freedom. It is. Wow. What a message. So proud of you. And I can, you look free. And every every time I see you on social media, I'm like, who is that? So thin (laughs) and free and happy. Your whole life has changed. Your family has changed. And I wanted to, in real time, share with the listeners how you can, in your own life, really begin to, uh, decide I refuse to let fear hold me, paralyze me, grip me, but I'm going to take that leap. Absolutely. If not now, when? Well, everybody, uh, thank you so much, Jamie. And as I say, every week, you may not know it or feel it, but you are surrounded by the love and the support of God. And uh, I'm just so excited for you and about the leaps that you're going to take in your own life. And uh, all during the week, I just want you to remember and think that 2019 is the beginning of some of the best years of your life. You better believe it. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com.